welcome to our brand new podcast. My name is Amelia. My name is Sherrick. And this is Amelia. And Sherrick, what are you doing? Where we do stuff. We do lots of stuff. We're going to talk about pretty much everything. If you haven't read the description of the podcast, I really don't know what to tell you at this point. That it talks about a lot about what this is going to be. And it also says absolutely nothing at the exact same time. It's Which is a, on brand. Mm-hmm, it's a wonder and a marvel. And I, and I uh, cannot thank you enough for <laughs> putting up with this. And, <laughs> Uh, but in all seriousness, we're going to get caught discussing pop culture, TV, film, games, uh, and all sorts of things like that. Yep, exactly. And we are super awkward people, so sorry if it's super awkward. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure that we've uh, got a super awkward audience ready to uh, strap in and put their seatbelts on, but then realize that they've somehow put it on incorrectly and then like be like, <laughs> hold on, guys, we can't start the car yet. Hold on, I- I'm really sorry about this. It's just, and then they're like, "Oh wait, that's the wrong one." And it's like, "Oh, but you have mine." And now, uh, okay, uh, and now, okay, fine. I just want to talk about. I'm really sorry, you guys. <laughs> yep, that um, that also seems on brand. So mm-hmm. yeah, I like exactly. it exactly. Um, so let's start with who the hell are we? <laughs> who, who the are hell we? are we? Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to college with Sherrick's wife yep um and that's how we know each other mm-hmm. and that's actually kind of how we got the name of the podcast also because in college people would say to me all the time Amelia what are you doing I don't even really remember how this started it just became like this weird joke that we would do all the time of people just like yeah coming up to me and saying Amelia what are you doing so yeah that's kind of how we got our name Mm-hmm. And yeah, we're going to tell you what we're doing and yes. who we are. And like Sherrick said, pop culture stuff. So, yeah. which is the great love of my life. So, yes, yes. So, um, <laughs> as far as I am concerned, I am a Milwaukee actor, a uh, video game player, uh, lover of Power Rangers, baseball, uh, some anime here and there, video games. I already mentioned that one. Um, and yeah, so, uh, Amelia and I have like indirectly either like to ourselves or to each other have been kicking around the idea of doing a podcast. And finally we both put on our adult pants in 2020 and we're like, we're doing it. And so we've spent a little bit of time figuring out what we wanted to do. And that, that, uh, brings us to this exact moment in time where you are listening to this in your car or in the library with earbuds on, hopefully, because, you know, it's a bad idea and poor form to not do that. Um, Where you're listening to us record this lovely podcast for your ear holes and things (laughs) of that nature. Yes, Uh, please don't listen to this out loud in a public space. Yeah, that's... Not because of this, but because it is so rude and I hate it so much. (laughs) So that's one of the things we're doing. We're chastising you if you're listening to this in the public. So <laughs> don't, do not do that do without headphones that. on. It's, it's it's just not okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I live in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, mm-hmm. And what else could I say about myself? Like you so beautifully did. Um, I watch TV pretty much exclusively in my free time. And I don't. (laughs) (laughs) So that's going to make this real, real interesting. Yeah. We both like a lot of pop culture stuff, but very different things. So, Mm -hmm. but we both make each other laugh. So I feel like that's the important thing. And everyone Um, says like, do something that you have fun doing because then we'll love listening to you do it. So this is what we're doing. So you better be enjoying it. Yep, exactly. Um, And it gives us an excuse to talk to each other. This is true. This is very true. So, hey, Amelia, how was your uh, tell, how was your week? <laughs> uh, uh, let's just not talk about that so much. <laughs> um, work has been super busy, mm-hmm. and it has made planning for this challenging, but also like a nice distraction. So, okay. um, yeah, I work 
um, in human resources in a small nonprofit, and I love it, but I also find it very frustrating. Um, it is still work, so mm-hmm. yeah, that's basically my week. Um, how about you? Uh, it's It's been kind of an interesting whirlwind week, so um, Tuesday... I was in Chicago um, shooting what is called an industrial, which is uh, for the uninitiated. It's like an internal video. So like any training videos or any sort of like internal commercials that a company would use. That's what this is. uh, One of these are for. So like if you've seen like a like a bumbling guy who's like, oh, this person with my boss's name sent me a link and says click it urgently to because they they need. $50. $50. I'm definitely going to click that. Like I'm the, the guy that does that. And you're just like, who thinks of this stuff? It, it, <laughs> well, it wasn't me, but I'm the one portraying it. Um, mm-hmm. So I did that. And then um, yesterday, which I'm not sure in the, in the time stream where this is going to fall, I appeared on a friend's podcast. It's called uh, we're into it with Matt and Nicole. Um, so definitely check that out. A little plug for them. Cause you know, they were nice enough to let me plug this podcast on theirs. Um, I think theirs comes out around like Valentine's day. So I think we might beat them to it. So technically we are plugging them first <laughs> as far as time <laughs> is concerned. Um, but um, a, in, in a, in a manner of, of, the Tuesday adventure to Chicago, I stumbled upon this thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, there is brisk half and half. I don't know if you are, are uh, a drinker of the, the Lipton brisk iced teas, but Not they, really. they are uh, a joy of mine, like Lipton brisk iced tea, like the sweetened like lemonade tea is just like, I know it's probably just awful for you, but it's just <laughs> chef's kiss for me. Yes. Uh, so I was like loading up on like, you know, driving snacks because I wanted to make sure that I was you know, staying awake and, and engaged and stuff. And there is a brisk half and half iced tea and blueberry lemonade. And I was like, what an odd combination that of flavors, odd. but it is such fire. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. If you were a fan of Lipton brisk iced tea in the slightest, I would give it a shot. Um, they're not paying me to say that, but there it is. Maybe someday. <laughs> Maybe Sunday, but not today. Yeah. But yeah, um, so I guess we should just start with the impetus as to like what we, because obviously some people who are like, oh, you're starting a podcast. What is it about? And I've kind of just been, at least me, I've been like, well, this is like the kind of thing we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, it, and uh, I will put it in the show notes or what have you, the link to this particular commercial. Uh, it's like the Doritos like insert logo here i think is what the official thing is called i don't know I if we're gonna like anti-ad yeah or something like that there's like an anti-ad there's a 60 minute or 60 minutes 60 second spot of it and there's also like a shorter like you know for actual tv version of it mm-hmm. um and it straight up does not say the name doritos nor does the logo at any point actually show up in the in the commercial yeah and it th- to me that shit is wild <laughs> Like, yeah, <laughs> just just the arrogance of Doritos and Frito Lay to be like, you know what? We're so fucking popular. We don't even need to show our logo. You know what the fuck we're talking about? And that's and basically that... the whole commercial. <laughs> like the the voiceover is basically like that. We are so iconic. We are so classic. Everybody knows us. We're mm-hmm. the original bodega snack. Chip. Like I think bodega stuff. snack is what they yeah. said. Yes, and it's just like. <laughs> The audacity of it all is just like so incredible. But at the same time, like they show these bags with like just red and blue bags Mm -hmm. with nothing on them, and you know exactly what it's for. So they're not totally wrong. True, very, very true. But Um, yeah, it's just like an assault of images (laughs) at your face, though. Because like you you have to watch this commercial because it's just so ridiculous of like just a guy wiping the Dorito dust on his white shirt, <laughs> which I know is a favorite of yours. It's, and... my, it's my favorite part in the whole commercial because he's like, it's like a kid who's wearing like a straight up like blank white t-shirt and a gold chain for no ass reason. <laughs> 
And he just like looks around real quick and is like, I don't have anywhere to clean my hands off. On my shirt's gonna do it. And yeah. he's like, he's looking around like, is anyone gonna catch me doing this? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, no, but they're gonna see this all day on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's like dudes farming corn and like, just, like <laughs> I don't know. There's just like so many images that are just like assaulting my eyeballs that I just can't mm-hmm. handle it and yet it totally works because like I said A you know exactly what it's for mm-hmm. and B it made me hungry for Doritos so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and C like we're talking about it uh, like we basically were like this will be the the the, the, the propelling point of our podcast is talking right. about the wild ass commercial right because we just could not get over how ridiculous and just like Mm -hmm. yeah i just i can't get over this commercial like wild is the only word i can think of wild to to really truly explain it but yeah so that was kind of the launching point uh and then uh i kind of had the idea of being like well shit like you know one of the great American pastimes is, is, as as of this recording date, uh, is like right around the corner and that's Super Bowl Sunday. Like we're, you know, literally less than a couple of days from it. And um, so I found a video of some of the like preview commercials, which is a fucking wild statement to, to make in 2020. Yes, yes. Uh, this was in my notes. <laughs> Um, just, uh, and I'm glad you, you did notes cause I like watched these, but I didn't like, I was just like, oh, this time code, this is a good commercial or this is a good one to talk about, but I did not keep notes. <laughs> so I'm glad you have notes so we can go, oh yeah, that's the one. Um, yes. but like, I, I, I was like, we should watch some of these, but it's like, if you go back, I'll say almost 30 years, cause I'm, I need to date myself somehow. There's, there's no, <laughs> there's. There's no such thing as a preview commercial. Like you saw the Super Bowl commercials during the Super Bowl, but like the fact is, like nowadays, it's like it, we're in such a society that it's like, oh no, 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 we have to show you a commercial to get you hype for the commercial. Right, <laughs> like, I know. I was like, is, okay, I was like, is this about the, our hype culture? Is mm-hmm. this about pulling eyeballs because there's like so many, there's so much content now that like to even get people excited about watching the commercials for the game, you have to like give them a preview to get them to care. Mm-hmm. Like I just, yeah, I, I it, found that really interesting. And yeah, Sherrick sent me this video of all these preview sneak peek commercials and it's 17 minutes long. And he's like, just watch some of it. And I, of course, good student that I am, watched the whole thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like the, the wildest part about it is some of them are legit like, it's like nonsensical image. And then 220, 2020, like it's a fucking movie trailer. And it's like, we understand it's a Super Bowl commercial. Like, right. <laughs> see the rest right. of this commercial on 220, 2020. And it's like, can you right. fucking not? So like there's some of them that I just straight up skipped because it was just like I'm showing this picture of Chris Rock like or it's like a short video and it's like these kids with like model we're already diving into it fuck it but I think this is one of the ones that I skipped um, it's a video and it's like these kids in like Central Park in New York or just some park uh, you know I assume it's New York because that's where Chris Rock would probably be hanging out um, and they're all struggling with like these model like space shuttles. And then Chris Rock has this blank ass smile on his face as they pan down to him. And he's holding like this like panel or something and a plunger in his hand that is depressed. And his rocket is slowly taking off like it's Apollo 13. <laughs> and it's just like 220, 2020. And I'm like, the fuck does this do? Like, I know. what is this? But again, it's effective because now you're like, I want to know what the whole commercial is. I yeah, kind of, because it's like Chris yeah. Rock is the last person that I would think to be just like chilling in Central Park with a bunch of like, you know, all like pre-high school kids who are trying to shoot their like model rockets into the air. Right. So yeah, like it's a lot of them were like weird things or like a little snippet of what you assume is going to be a larger longer commercial because i mean that's the whole thing about super bowl commercials is that they're like crazy and expensive and you know all that stuff and so 
those ones that was just like we're just gonna throw something weird at you and then you're like well I, now i have to watch the game because i have to find out what this commercial is mm-hmm. um whereas some of the commercials were just like regular ordinary serious commercials and i was like nobody cares about this just <laughs> uh you know what it makes me think of and it, I, I love i love these and i hate them at the same time and they it's it's more it's more prevalent on twitter than it is anywhere else it's the fucking you have to click next 18 times to read this entire article and they like try and hook you in and it's like this lady opened her bag of uh, her bag of Doritos and you'll never guess what was inside and it's like almost always the, the there's this meme that gets used and it's a, it's a picture of the entire cast of Scooby Doo and Fred is like <laughs> pointing and you you're laughing because I'm hoping you know exactly which one I'm talking about. Yeah. Have you seen this meme? Okay. They're point like Fred is like pointing like just off off camera and it goes, Come on, gang, we ain't clicking that shit. Let's go to the comment section for clues. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> it's like you go to the comment section and someone has been like, Oh yeah, this they just they just screenshot it so you don't have to like or they just right. say, Here's yeah. here's what happened. There was a fucking right. like Dorito that was the, the wrong flavor in her bag and it's right. like I, I did not need to click next 27 right. times like yes like because it, it always starts off with like Cheryl was just a common woman getting some Doritos she <laughs> lived in Boulder Colorado and worked at the 7-Eleven she occasionally stole a Slurpee next <laughs> one day she decided she was gonna get a dog and it's like what the fuck like what the fuck does the dog have to do with the goddamn bag of doritos yeah 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 okay so what's funny about that is like i'm pretty sure i know like what image you're talking about but i don't think i've ever actually seen this meme um of like we're not gonna click next and we're just gonna look at the comments but that makes it like so much better and now i need to find this because oh i have it for you once we're done it's hilarious okay cool (laughs) yes uh, so like yeah so i i saved it because i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna hold on to this because it's you know that's yes. what do nowadays is like there's there's fucking memes about saving memes <laughs> it's just like <laughs> <laughs> just a thread full yes. of memes and there's one yes. like don't mind me just came here to borrow some memes all right <laughs> <laughs> uh we've gone wildly off topic but that's gonna happen that's yeah, that's... Like, Eric, what are you doing and just the podcast name has fulfilled itself Um, yes exactly but yeah so I some highlights for me which I okay you have to link this we have to link this um particular video in the show notes because Mm -hmm. like people need to go see it and this has like nothing to do with commercials or with the Super Bowl but at the beginning of this stupid video there's this fucking llama (laughs) that like introduces this video to you and when Sherrick sent it to me it was like I'm sorry about the llama at the beginning (laughs) (laughs) and I'm watching this and the llama says something about being a lazily animated llama and I was like that that sounds like that sounds like the tagline for my life (laughs) a lazily (laughs) Animated Lazily l- animated llama. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this starts out with, and here one thing that we definitely wanted to touch on is the death of Mr. Peanut. Yes. Um, iconic, and just you know, so, so so sad that they have decided to kill off Mr. Peanut. But you have to see this commercial where they do it because, first of all, it's like they're driving around in a peanut mobile, basically, Mm -hmm. and they, what, crash or drive off a cliff? There's an armadillo in the road for just like all of a sudden, I think it's, um, I don't remember who the other actor is, but I'm pretty sure Wesley Snipes is in it. With Mr. Peanut, and I believe they're eating peanuts in the peanut mobile, correct? Of course they are. Yes. And I was like, Mr. Peanut is just chill with this. Like he's like, like all of his like family or like hey, distant cousins is yeah, just being so rude. Silly, and he's totally chill with it. Anyway, go on. Yes, and so then they crash, and Mr. Peanut and these other two guys are like hanging off a tree branch. 
and Mr. Peanut like sacrifices himself so that they can live and it's just like so ridiculous so and it's, sorry to interrupt it's just like no. they so they slide off a cliff and there just happens to be a tree branch sticking off the cliff and they're of like course. oh cool and then it starts to crack and they're like we're too heavy and then like Wesley Snipes is like hey uh other actor you gotta you gotta let go and the other actor is like no Wesley you gotta let go and then Mr. Peanut with his like slightly cracked monocle just like looks down and then looks at them and of course he's like he doesn't speak so like yeah. they like see him like doing that and they realize like what he's going to do and they go no not you and he just like salutes them and just lets go <laughs> and like he doesn't have like a look on his face other than like a smile like it's like a drawn uh-huh. on smile so it's just like the, like it just looks like he's like, I did it. I fulfilled my life's purpose. As he's like, yes. <laughs> and then he yes. lands and they go, ah, he's all right. And then the, the peanut mobile explodes. Right. Okay. So like, I know, I feel like I'm supposed to be sad for Mr. Peanut and that like this, that whole thing is so cliche to just have somebody be like, oh, he's fine. And then boom, explodes. Yes. But I still laughed my ass <laughs> when the peanut mobile exploded i was just like that is gold (laughs) so uh from from what i understand because obviously like a ton of people are talking about this and and rightfully so like it's Mm -hmm. it's a bold move by planters to just be like hey we're gonna fucking kill our mascot uh Mm -hmm. two things number one they have changed his official twitter account to the estate of mr peanut it okay, is now that's listed as that. Um, and two, apparently, the Super Bowl commercial commercial is going to be his funeral. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that they have gone all in on this. And so, like, and... My, my first thought of it was this, like, like what's the what's the end game of this? And, and I guess right. the end game is just to be wild as shit. Like, <laughs> just... I guess. I know. It makes me think, like, okay, so he's just been going to be gone, so what are your commercials going to be now? But now I'm like, are we going to have, like, Ghost Mr. Peanut? Are we going to have, like, Zombie Mr. Peanut? Like, what's going to happen? I just, yeah, I don't really understand the end game, but I, I love the commitment. Mm-hmm. I, and... feel, I feel like the move to make now is that, like, in his will, like, both of those actors are going to have to, like, do Planters Nuts commercials and be like, just like for the rest of <laughs> the rest of their lives as they've been yep. they've just been consigned to doing it and they're just depressed yep. and just real like we don't want to do this anymore we fucking miss him and just like do the fucking commercial <laughs> <laughs> yes he I, gave his life for you this is the least you could fucking do i really hope that's the case <laughs> <laughs> but i just i love it i love it when brands commit to their social media as well so, like, changing his Twitter to the estate of, it's just, oh, just excellent. Just Mwah. excellent. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, what other commercials in this did you notice? Um, oh, like I said, I, I am the lame one who didn't, who didn't write down <laughs> notes. So, feel free to, to hit us with our notes and I'll give you my thoughts on them. Okay. So, two commercials that I like yeah just really felt the need to comment on one there was a bud commercial a budweiser commercial um, oh good yes like, yes i'm i think Alexa I know what you're and like like all the google home whatever i don't know all those smart things. speakers yeah talking to each other and um saying what's up <laughs> as as per the like late 90s Budweiser commercials with the frogs saying what's up and as much as I wanted to fucking hate it nah my nostalgia loving ass was eating that shit up (laughs) I I'm I think I'm on the same boat as you because I wanted to be like who the fuck is this for because like there's like you know there's not that many people around that like were around saw that super bowl and 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 enjoyed that commercial like everyone uh-huh. knew what it was but also like you know before memes uh you just like Im- you just imitated the shit poorly on the playground you know that you saw oh. on tv or what have you um right. but then i was like you know what 
it's a it's a fucking masterstroke by Budweiser because the people who don't know what the fuck is going on are going to be like, what is this? And then they're going to have to go back and find an old ass YouTube video of the original commercial. Uh And so it was like a commercial for themselves and that old ass commercial. Yes, I know. It was like a trailer. It was like like a a, a, a way deep cut throwback to it. Yes. So great. And given how like much we are bringing things back and rebooting and reviving old things it just like it fit the moment perfectly mm-hmm. of saying like we're gonna remake this old commercial for today and you're either gonna go what the fuck is this and try to look it up or you're gonna be like oh it feels like 1999 again <laughs> the simpler time simpler time Mm-hmm. now uh, to uh, be 13 again re- no. real quick aside because I, I, i'm very curious to hear wh- where's your where's your nostalgia draw the line at amelia what do you like, mean like you you brought up that um like a lot of stuff gets rebooted and stuff like give an example of some shit that you're just like nah could have stayed could have stayed in the past like anything that's come back recently oh gosh that's a great question um to me, it kind of depends on how they do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that... Um, I think... Mm, that's a really good question. Because um, uh, I'll let you, like, marinate on it. Because for me... So um, I have... Uh, I'm going to admit to something that potentially could be embarrassing, but it is what it is. I have seen Knives Out three times now. Uh-huh. Um, and with different people because at first we saw it and then I was like this is the greatest movie I have seen in a very long time and so then like uh, I had a friend a couple of friends who were like we haven't seen it and I was like y- you want to go I'll go with you I'll see it again and so we went and saw it and then um, I had another like a co-worker and, and a very close friend of mine uh, be like well I got nothing to do on a Saturday I kind of want to see a movie and I was like you want to see Knives Out and she was like oh okay I was like good <laughs> but they showed a com- they showed a trailer for a movie that very quickly I was like, oh, I know what the fuck this movie is. And it's, they're rebooting Fantasy Island as a film. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be under the Blum, I think it's like, is it Blumhouse, I think? Uh, the, the Jordan Peele kind of like oh, yeah. um, banner That's- of like those kind of horror films. Uh-huh. And to me, I was like, mm, you could have done this movie without the Fantasy Island call, call in. I would have been fine with it. I, right. I, I feel about it, but but yeah. and who knows? My feelings on that may change by the time that it comes out, which is going to be, I believe, on Valentine's Day, which was a weird, like, yeah, you know, uh, weird thing because like a bunch of the people that were in the theater were like, "That's a Valentine's Day movie," and that cut like you know had all the audience laughing because some random person was like, "That's a fucking Valentine's Day movie," and we all right, like, but yeah, you know, like I, I guess I haven't. I guess I haven't, like, I don't know. If I care about the old thing, then I tend to check out the new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so far, I haven't been super disappointed, I guess. Um, and I think, yeah, like, I think it depends on whether it's, like, a reboot or, like, a continuation. Because I think, like, we kind of keep using those words, like, re- reboot and revive and bring back and to mm-hmm. mean the same thing but they don't really like at all so mm-hmm. you know there's like um there's like rebooting jumanji and it has like nothing to do with the old movie really other than like it's a similar premise it's just been updated it's with different people different characters right and like so to me that kind of stuff can be really cool because um like it doesn't diminish the old thing. It's just like, we're going to think about this differently and do it in a different way. Um, and then there are like TV shows that are just like a continuation of an old TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's like a sequel show like Fuller House or Girl Meets World or whether it's like literally we're just going to do more seasons of Curb Your Enthusiasm or Will and Grace or, you know, whatever yeah. it is. And I actually like... I don't have a problem with the concept so much as the execution. So, um, and 
I think, honestly, my biggest problem with the whole thing are the fucking assholes who are like, don't ruin the thing that I love or whatever. And it's like, why does it have, like, why does rebooting this or redoing <clears throat> it or making it different ruin the old thing? The yeah, old thing I, uh... still exists. It's still there. You don't need to watch the new thing, but also you could watch the new thing and judge it for yourself, but recognize that they're two separate things. Right. Yeah. I 100% agree with you on that. And it's like, you know, using, uh, because I am want to use, I will make a lot of reference to this. Power Rangers is an example. Like 2017, they did a whole new Power Rangers film. They changed the look of pretty much everything brian cranston was zordon bill Hader was alpha five and it was kind of weird like and, and it's like to me so many people were like you've ruined power rangers and it's like you could just pretend that doesn't exist like if it's a thing that you don't like you can acknowledge that some people wanted it and some people didn't because obviously right. like a part of the, like the reboot culture the reimagining culture is like there's a demand for this beyond just we we're, we're out of ideas you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, the idea got legs somewhere. They were like, you know what? What if we just like redid a Power Rangers film? Mm -hmm. And somebody like enough people were like, that's a good fucking idea. Like, you know, to, to right. do that thing. And so like, even though like I will go on record as, as saying that like I wasn't the biggest fan of it after I watched it, like I was like, eh, I'll own it because I want to support the people. And I, like, if, if there are people that are out there that want more of this, then I don't want to like, you know, I mean, I, it's to me it's like it's 20 bucks okay fine i'll own it because i may want to watch it again someday and hey it supports the actors and all that good shit but like to me it's like okay if i didn't like it i can also go okay well that's not for me as right. opposed to like, this thing needs to be destroyed because i don't like it you know right and i mean like the classic classic instance of this is ghostbusters that mm -hmm. when they remade ghostbusters with ladies fucking misogynists decided that this was like ruining their childhood and it's mm -hmm. like you know what shut up like <laughs> just, just, like it was a fucking good movie and if you didn't want to see it you didn't have to see it mm -hmm. if you want to talk shit about it maybe see it before you judge it but like i just your movie still exists. Mm -hmm. They did what two or three of them, and they're doing another one that's basically pretending like the lady one never happened. So you got what you fucking wanted, and like you're hiding behind your fandom and your whatever to basically it's it's hide gatekeeping the fact really. That you're a misogynist. Mm, it's it's gatekeeping at its worst really and yes exactly. i feel like we we could definitely go because i i do want to explore the ghostbusters uh thing a little bit more mm -hmm. but i feel like we could probably fill a whole episode with our feelings oh, on that probably. so we yes. should probably get back to the super bowl commercials and stuff <laughs> <laughs> okay so what there was another one and i think it was was it a budweiser commercial the the, the one that was the football commercial where the like the kicker did you uh, the the kicker like he they land a perfect field goal and everyone's like cheering i don't remember who it was oh for, and the name, i, I like, wasn't there. sort of remember this but it just okay. like didn't make an impression i don't it, okay so this one wasn't funny but i uh and i think it had an impression on me because it was such a oh no it was a secret commercial and that's gonna you know oh going, that one okay yes, yeah, it, yes. it's going to I, i've already kind of like slipped up and spoiled it a little bit but like so it's it's the big game quote unquote and they just show like the kicker's foot and it's an nfl football and like the, the ball is snapped you can see people in the audience are like you know the fans the are like, they're not very, <laughs> yes yeah the the people uh in the stands are like um you know stressing out about it the kick is up the kick is good everyone's cheering the player takes off their helmet and it's a woman and like everyone slowly is like record scratch yep woman and it's like i i love it in execution but it has that plot hole of like uh you would fucking know it was a woman if it was at this stage in the game like <laughs> like you know it's like they don't just sneak them on the field like you know um and then it's like pretty much i, I want to say it's 
everyone on the field is a woman. I don't know for sure. They only showed like a couple of ladies, Mm -hmm. but like another lady takes off her helmet and then all of a sudden the crowd starts cheering again because they're like, you know what? It's all right that these ladies are playing in an NFL football game. And I was just like, you know what, Secret? Good call. There are going to be a bunch of fucking people on your ass and I'm so sorry that you're going to have to deal with all these fucking people that are going to make up all sorts of bullshit excuses as to why, oh, you know, this this commercial is for lib snowflakes or whatever. I don't want to get too into that kind of thing. But like, I really, really enjoyed that commercial. And I think it was a good call for Secret. So good for them. Yeah, I feel like this is another area where we could do like almost a whole episode about it. About Mm -hmm. like companies using their advertising for a cause, sort of, quote unquote, or for like a social issue. Um, Because not only was there this commercial from Secret, but then there were also a couple of commercials from uh, Olay that were like something about like women in space or something. They weren't Mm -hmm. super clear because it was obviously uh, um, like a tease to make you want to watch the whole commercial. So I don't know the whole premise, but um, but it definitely had that same sort of like. it it was the same sort of idea of like we're going to be talking about these women's personal care products and put feminism in there somehow and on the one hand I really like that and then on the other hand I have like I don't know I have some misgivings about it sometimes okay um and so I think that would be a really interesting I think that would be a really interesting topic for the future. Yeah, like... for sure, for sure. We're just giving you all sorts of teases. With th- yeah. These are our Super Bowl teases. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about these eventually, but you won't fucking know when. You'll know when. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know when. But um, yeah, so that those the Olay ones were kind of like, I think I turned my brain off during those just because I was like, oh, these are teasers. So I'm not really going to get any good information mm-hmm. other than like ladies are involved, which is fine, obviously. No problems with that. But I was just like, oh, I kind of was that con- conditioned at that point to really just like pay attention to the ones that were like, I am a clear cut commercial, like, yeah. or at least a commercial yeah. for a commercial. Right. Um, and the ones that were like, you know, like uh, the, going back to the Chris Rock thing, they showed a different one uh, later on where it's a guy who isn't like, in a trailer or something just doing push-ups and then they do alternating arm push-ups and then their head lifts and it's chris rock and this guy like guy off camera is just like hey mr rock what do you want to do with these eggs and it was just like 220 2020 and i was like the fuck is this yeah <laughs> like, exactly so like exactly so yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting i don't know if i'm gonna watch the super bowl honestly and, oh, and i think that's a no. I think that's a thing that like we thought would be fun to do is just like talk about the commercials because we're both like very much not committed to watching the big game, but uh, not can... at all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about some more some more of the other ones that were in there. If you have any um, notes for them, the other one that I definitely wanted to mention that I thought was maybe my favorite of the whole bunch was a commercial with MC Hammer. Yes. Yes. Oh, there were a couple actually, but mm-hmm. the the first one was just him dancing around and then stealing some Cheetos, which um, I didn't know. I, I was like, I wanted to rewatch it, but I was obviously a little bit on the time crunch, and I was like, I don't know if that was him or if it was just like a stand-in dressed as mm-hmm. him. You know what I mean? So I kind of just like right. packed that one away later, and then go on. Yeah. So I, you're right. I didn't go back, but then later there was another one, and. It was him, and I'm pretty sure it was him, but again, I'd have to go back and check. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, At a piano, and he's eating the Cheetos, and he, like, is going to start playing the piano to start, I think, writing a song, and then realizes that his fingers have Cheeto dust all over them. (laughs) And and he says to himself, you can't touch this. (laughs) <laughs> and then like the shot is so perfectly framed because it goes from like a shot like you know just hitting him from the left side to a shot just over the top of the piano as he raises his head 
and opens his mouth and then it's like 220 2020 and i was like fucking yes that was yes. so good yes so i want to see the whole commercial but i also just love the idea that you can't touch this was written about cheetos <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we we brought it back because the, the dumb bodega kid wiping his stuff on his shirt exactly should have realized he should have learned from MC Hammer. Go, I can't touch this. <laughs> <laughs> we brought it back. We did it. We did it. We brought it full circle. Circle. Full on oh. circle. But All yeah, right, that well, was. This might be a good place to move on and. Uh... Unless you have All anything right. else to say about these commercials. No. Um, so, I mean, I've, uh, um, I, I, for the most part, I enjoyed them. Like I said, the only ones that I feel like I really didn't enjoy were the ones that were just like the preview commercials. Cause I very quickly was like, okay, these are just going to be like, not necessarily shock value previews, but just like, you'll never guess what wacky shit this has to do with. And then I'll like end up watching the commercial. And I'll be like, thanks, Chris Rock. Like, I, I appreciate I appreciate you as, as a comedian and as an actor, but I don't know why I fell for the clickbait on this one. Yep, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, you know, I don't really feel like that commercials in general get that way, but definitely around like larger events. Like, there's not really a like, like a a practice of showing like crazy crazy commercials for like the world series or the nba finals but there's Mm-mm. definitely those for the super bowl and it's like it's a little interesting to me i'd like to maybe do a little research on that and figure out like maybe it's maybe it's just because of the wild popularity of the nfl and, and like the, la- the lack of us for the nba and all that other stuff but why those commercials have gotten to be such a big big deal but mm-hmm. who knows i also think it has to do with like it's one game right mm-hmm. so like true the NBA finals are like a longer thing. The World mm-hmm. Series is a longer thing. And I would assume that ad space around those are like more expensive. But yeah, there's something about the Super Bowl commercials that are just like it just it's a thing. And I don't mm-hmm. know why it's a thing, but it's been a thing for a very long time. So now now do you think that the Super Bowl commercials have they, they have helped birth the clickbait culture or do you think that they're just following the trend? Uh, I think that's a good question. Um, I think in some ways they do start trends, um, but I'm not sure if they started a clickbait culture. Mm-hmm. Because I, I mean, you could kind of say that like there there are some memes of our time, you know, because we're mm-hmm. both thirty somethings, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So like the, the to go back to the Budweiser commercial, like they, like you know, a, a, like a bunch of kids were doing the Budweiser and the WhatsApp, like you know, there mm-hmm. were shirts about it and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it it permeated in the wrestling culture, which is a story for another time. Um, there were actual wrestlers who were doing like they made the WhatsApp like part of one of their moves. It it's fucking mm-hmm. hilarious in 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 good and bad ways. But like <laughs> you could argue that they they created some memes of our time and now mm-hmm. they're kind of just like following along, like kind of circling back and being like, we're catching back up, guys. We promise. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I sort of I think that's how I feel too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's um Definitely some interesting commercials to watch. Uh, if you are out there listening and you want to be a part of the conversation, you can follow us at A-S-W-A-Y-D. That stands for Amelia and Sherrick. Well, Amelia, Sherrick, what are you doing? Because A-A-S-W-A-Y-D just seems a little silly. Um, or you could, <laughs> I don't know. We could use the hashtag uh, A-A-S-W-A-Y-D if you want. You can make that the hashtag. In the, but the um, the Twitter name is a S W A Y D P O D. So A S W A Y D pod. Um, you can follow us there and talk to us about them. Tell us what you think about them. We we want to we want to hear from you guys as well. So um, there's that. And uh, before we let you go and let y'all get back to your you know morning or afternoon or evening commute or get to let you finish washing the dishes and listening to crime documentaries or whatever, <laughs> I have I have the first official segment for. Uh, Amelia and Sherrick, what are you doing? And it is called, Amelia, what the fuck is this? I'm so, so excited for this. Uh, so I, um, I I'm, unfortunately, I blew, uh, I blew the, 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 uh, the, probably the best 
version of this uh, by telling her about it when we were in planning. But uh, and I found a picture of somebody who returned four address numbers to Home Depot because they weren't the correct numbers that they needed. Uh, and it was, I want to say is four, three, two, and zero. And the, the customer returned them because she needed four, zero, two, three, or something like that. She needed them in a different order. So she returned them and I went, Amelia, what the fuck is this? And I, she's like, well, I don't want to know about them. So we can't talk about it, but I, I, I gave, I gave it the respect it deserves. But uh, so this, this lovely segment is I'm just going to find some crazy ass shit on the internet and Amelia doesn't know about it. And uh, we're going to just, unpack it for a second or two yep. Um, yep. so i went to uh the the favorite place to find crazy shit on the internet aka reddit yep. uh this is our tales from retail uh this was posted by the user who is accushot865 so uh thank you unintentionally for letting me uh use this without your permission <laughs> <laughs> but i'm giving you credit so so there you go uh the title I'm not going to say what it is because it gives away things. Oh, good. Uh, okay. Uh, I work third shift at a convenience store off a major interstate, so I already get some weird customers, but this one takes the cake. Customer walks in at about 11.45 p.m. and walks back to the beer. They come up to me, placing the 24-pack on the counter. Uh, I scan and check their ID, same as usual, but when I tell them the price, they hand me an index card. I take it and look at it. It's got a bunch of numbers on it. I wait about 10 seconds before I ask, I'm sorry, what is this? The customer says, well, it's my credit card. What and the fuck? <laughs> I say, uh, no, it's not. It's an index card. Customer, well, yeah, but I wrote all the important stuff on there so you can put everything in. Me, no, I can't. These could be the numbers of some random person's credit card. I can't be sure. Customer, but I'm telling you it's my credit card. Me, I'm sorry, but I can't take this. I'm just going to pause for a second to let you breathe because there's more. How did you know I was holding my breath? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. I'm definitely learning. Okay. So the customer walks away saying they'll be uh, saying he'll be back. So it is a guy. He'll be back with the actual one and that they'll want to speak with my manager when I get back. I shrug figuring it's an empty threat to get me to sell them beer and go back to work. Two hours later. So it's a.m. time now. Yeah. Uh, comes back in, grabs a 24 pack of beer and struts to the register looking smug. Customer says, I got my credit card now. I scan everything, check ID and tell them the price. They put a handful of shredded plastic on the counter. The I fuck? Look, I look at the mound of plastic, then at them. Me? Seriously, what is this? Customer, it's my credit card. Me? This is a pile of plastic. Customer, I know. I thought it'd be fun to put my card through a shredder. Me. I can't take this. It's obviously trash. Just like this person. <laughs> um, customer. I, you have to take it. I'm a paying customer. Me. State law says I have the right to refuse service to anyone I choose. Customer. I want to speak to your manager. This is unfair. Me. The manager won't be in for another four hours, which is fuck wild to me because we're talking like mid like you know i, I was gonna say mid morning but that's obviously different like it's like 4 a.m at this point yeah the manager's coming in which is oh my god yikes customer storms out peels off in their car the rest of my shift goes smoothly 20 minutes before my shift ends the manager walks in walks in looking annoyed manager just tell me what happened with the customer i relay what? The, <laughs> i relay the entire story and show them the shredded credit card that the customer left behind the manager looks at me for a second and then says Next time someone does something like this, just tell them to stick it where the sun don't shine. <laughs> so now that you've got the full story, Amelia, the fuck is this? Why? People are idiots. <laughs> I Okay. So being in my early to mid 30s, um, mm -hmm grew up with classic Disney movies and I I feel like over the last several years I have never related to Scar from Lion King more <laughs> not totally not completely I I'm I have no interest in taking over a kingdom um but 
the part where he says I'm surrounded by idiots Mm -hmm. is my daily mood (laughs) and this is just another story that confirms that Mm -hmm. and I just cannot like (sighs) this reminds me of like the people who like take a picture of their credit card or their gift card and put it online to like be like oh my god look i got my first credit card or whatever why is everybody asking me for the code on the back <laughs> i have seen that one that's, i just like it's so how good. are you that stupid really i thought it'd be fun to shred my credit card yeah it is fucking fun but you know what <laughs> like do it to an old card <laughs> I just, I can't. I, uh, why? Of course. Uh, what you do on Reddit is the opposite of what you, what you would do pretty much anywhere else. Unless oh, you yeah. go to some trashy Reddit places. And you read the comments. Uh, the author, AccuShot865, some dude tried to print off an ID and laminate it. Only thing is there was no writing on the back and the signature was, pic- signature was pixelated as hell. So, so yeah, that, that is, uh, that is, that lovely segment uh, oh, and, uh what, a, so glad. what a good inaugural <sighs> i'm hoping that more of them will be like uh it's just like an image that, or that i get to describe and you'll just like i will be able to just like what the fuck is this as opposed to just like a, a fucking idiot but like yeah oh this, my god the, yes the go pretty much as well as you would expect it for reddit which is yep. like a bunch of people just dunking on this guy right. <laughs> and a couple oh of more like, stories about like, uh, someone photocopying a check and then being like, well, this wouldn't be valid because it's just a copy of the check and not the actual check itself. Like, right. How, what are you doing? So, just, oh my God. So what? that is officially Amelia. The fuck is this? Um, so I think that's, that's um the show kind of at least that's that's number one um yeah. just some quick stuff for you just some quick housekeeping stuff if you liked the episode if you want us to do more of these and you're just like hey that was actually not uh cringy as hell uh <laughs> and i enjoyed <laughs> this um you should definitely leave us a, a five-star review uh, i believe we'll be on apple podcasts and and we'll also be on like you know, Spotify and all those other places where you can get your stuff. Please write a review. Tell us what you think. Constructive criticism is the best way to help us make this show better. So please don't be like, this show was trash. Like, you know, unless you were like, hey, there was trash in the background. Please stop fiddling with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's constructive criticism. Yes. Um, like I said, you can follow us uh, on Twitter at A-S-W-A-Y-D-P-O-D. You can find us there. Um, I believe it's anchor.fm slash A-S-W-A-Y-D. I don't remember if the pod is on the end. I don't think it is. Um, no, it is not. So you can follow us there. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, we're going to start kind of talking about the schedule for it. Um, so we'll get to that at some point. Oh, I, I also wanted to mention we have pets. Uh, you're like, why the hell would you mention that? Uh, I have two parrots. And so you probably heard them during this episode. Uh, you will definitely see good, good pictures of them on our Twitter account. Um, I have two birds. Amelia has two cats. Um, she has named them after Beatles characters. I have one who is pre-named and one who I definitely named after a character in Pokemon. So there you yes. go. Yeah. And in fact, in the middle of this episode, one of my cats started hawking up a hairball. So... <laughs> It was pretty quiet, so I don't think that it got recorded, but it mm-hmm. was definitely a moment where I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Yikes, but which one? okay, so Who was it? good. Who was it? <laughs> was it Pepper? No, it was Penny. It was Penny. Oh, rip. Rip Penny. Yep. Um, hey, Amelia, where can they find you uh, on the internet in places that you would be okay with people finding you? <laughs> so, basically, my handle for everything is Shake Meets World. Um, and I don't mind if people find me anywhere using that. So, mm-hmm. okay. Um, I can be found uh, very similarly to Amelia. I am a black sparrow pretty much everywhere. A is in the letter, black is in the color, sparrow is in the bird. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, twitch.tv. Um, I do stream 
occasionally I play video games there so you can find me and you can yell at me about how I was too loud or whatever on this episode and do all that kinds of stuff um and if you want you can take a look at my like resume because like I said I'm an actor at sharekrobinson.com so Amelia this was a lot of fun we should do this uh you know on like a semi-regular basis (laughs) yeah we really should Mm -hmm. so yes I loved this and I hope that everybody listening like likes it And doesn't find it too awkward or cringy or finds it awkward and cringy in the best way. Yes. And yes, please let us know what you thought. Yes. And uh, if we should keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And if you do think we should keep doing it, the best way to let us know is to tell your friends, share it, you know, put it on something and be like, hey, these guys are starting out. You should definitely give them a listen. All that kind of stuff. It's super, super helpful. So word of mouth would be super, super appreciated. Tell your friends to give us a, a shot and maybe they'll, we'll become one of their new favorite podcasts. So, yeah. uh, but for now, uh, that's Amelia. And that's Sherrick. And this has been Amelia and Sherrick. What are you doing? And we'll talk to you again next time. Bye. Bye.